Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity 4 Commander. Today we have another exciting gameplay video for you to enjoy, so without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Tatsunori Toad Rider Enchantments Matter deck, and keep an opening hand containing Overgrowth, Season of Renewal, Tamiyo's Completion, Frogemoth, Golgari Rot Farm, an Island, and a Forest. James is playing his Scythus Harvest's Hand Enchantress deck, and keeps a starting hand of Canopy Cover, Destiny Spinner, Open the Armory, Ancestral Mask, Terramorphic Expanse, and two Snow Covered Plains. Thomas is playing his Katzen and Gathrod Mill deck, and keeps a hand consisting of an Offer You Can't Refuse, Ruin Crab, Demir Signet, Bloodstained Mire, Port of Carfell, Takanuma Abandoned Mire, and Waterfront District. And finally, Michael is playing his King Kenrith 5 color Good Stuff deck, and keeps an opening hand of Far Seek, Kodama's Reach, Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight, Ashen Rider, Poseidon who shelters all, an island, and a swamp. Thomas wins the die roll, and starts the game off by playing Temple of Deceit. He chooses to keep the top card of his library where it is, and passes to Michael. Michael plays an island and passes. I play a forest and end my turn. James plays Terramorphic Expanse and passes to Thomas. Thomas casts a very shiny Ruin Crab and then plays Waterfront District. The rest of us mill three cards thanks to the crab's landfall ability triggering and Thomas passes the turn. Michael plays a swamp and casts Lightning Greaves before ending his turn. In my turn, I play Golgari Rot Farm, returning my forest to my hand with my land's ETB. I then discard down to 7 and pass to James, who responds by sacrificing his Terramorphic Expanse. James searches his library for a snow covered forest, puts it into play tapped, and proceeds to his turn. James plays a snow covered plains and casts his commander, Sithis Harvest's Hand. Out of mana, he passes the turn. Thomas plays Port of Carfell, milling the rest of us for three of his Crustacean. Next he taps out to cast a mere Signet, and ends his turn. Michael plays a Plains, and passes to Martin. In my turn I play an Island, and cast my Commander, Tatsunori Toad Rider. With nothing more to do, I pass the turn. James plays a Snow Covered Plains, and casts Utopia Sprawl. He gains a life and draws a card with Scythus' ability, enchants his tapped force with the aura, and then casts open the armory. James searches his library for Utopia Vow, puts the enchantment into his hand, and ends his turn. Thomas begins his turn by playing an island, milling James, Michael, and I for three. He then casts Timurit, chosen from death, and passes to Michael. Michael plays Boseiju, who shelters all, and passes. I play a forest and cast Tamiyo's completion, targeting Sithis. The Nymph becomes permanently tapped, and more importantly, loses all of her abilities, and Tatsunori's ability triggers, creating me a 3 3 Kami token. Rabbit. Moving to combat, I take full advantage of James having no blockers, attacking him with my commander. He takes 3 damage in this way, and I end my turn. James plays Command Tower and casts the Utopia Vow that he tutored for last turn. He has the Aura Enter attached to Martin's Commander and casts Destiny Spinner before ending his turn. Thomas starts his turn by playing Bloodstained Mire, triggering both Ruin Crab and my hatred of off coloured fetchlands. James, Michael, and I mill three cards, and Thomas pays one life to sacrifice his Mire. He searches his library for a swamp, puts the land into play, and mills everybody else for three more cards. Not yet finished, Thomas casts his commander, Captain Engerthrod. Oh, is that how you pronounce that? I have no idea. Anyway, Thomas moves to his end step where his commander's ability triggers. He puts the Sire of Stagnation in Michael's graveyard onto the battlefield under his control, and passes to the not-so-pleased Spaniard. Michael plays a forest, triggering Sire of Stagnation's ability. He exiles the top two cards of his library, and Thomas draws two cards in this way. Not to be deterred, 
Michael casts Kodama's Reach, paying 2 life to Poseidon you to do so. He puts a force into play, a second force into his hand, and the Sire's ability triggers once more. Michael exiles two more cards from his library, Thomas draws two cards, and with two mana remaining, Michael passes the turn. In my turn, I play Exotic Orchard, exiling the top two cards of my library. Thomas draws two, and I cast Overgrowth, targeting my forest. Kami's ability triggers, causing each of my opponents to lose a life and me to gain a life, and I tap my remaining lands to cast Lightcaster. Moving to combat, I attack Michael with Kami, dealing him 3 damage, and end my turn. James begins his turn by casting Dark Steel Mutation, transforming Sire of Stagnation into a 0-1 insect with no abilities. Hooray! Next, he casts Ancestral Mass, enchanting his spinner and giving her plus 16, plus 16 in the process. Oh no! James considers attacking, but ultimately decides to leave the small creature as a blocker and passes to Thomas. Thomas plays Sunken Hollow, milling the rest of us for three, and then casts Dusk Mantle Guild Mage. Next, he casts Mind Crank and moves to combat where he attacks James with his commander and Michael with his demigod. Neither player is able to block, given that the pirate has menace and Michael has no creatures, and Thomas decides not to activate his guild mage's ability, which would interact with Mindcrank to finish them both off instantly. This decision was made partially in the interest of fun, but also because Thomas was worried that I'd sweep in and steal the win from him, which is a reasonable fear given my track record of such things. Damage then occurs with Michael taking 2 and James taking 3. Michael then mills 2 from Mindcrank and James mills 6 cards thanks to the combined effects of Mindcrank and Thomas's commander. Moving to his end step, Thomas puts the Timeless Witness in Michael's graveyard into play under his control, returning the Bloodstained Mire in his graveyard to his hand. Happy with his turn, Thomas discards down to 7 and passes. Michael plays Jetmere's Garden as his land for turn, and then casts a very pretty Farseek. He pays 2 life to Poseidon you to tap it for mana, milling 2 cards to Minecrank, and searches his library for a mountain. Michael then puts the land into play tapped, and ends his turn. In my upkeep, Thomas casts Infernal Grasp, targeting Blightcaster. The wizard is destroyed, Thomas loses 2 life, and I move to my main phase. Here I play Temple of the False God, which I use to help cast Season of Renewal. I return Doomwake Giant and One with the Stars from my graveyard to my hand, and cast the former, triggering their Constellation ability. My opponent's creatures each get minus 1 minus 1, killing Timeless Witness and Sire of Stagnation, and Kami drains the rest of the table for 1. This triggers Mindcrank, milling Michael and James for one, and I move to combat. Here I attack Thomas with my Toad, and he declares no blocks, taking 3 damage. Unable to do anything else at this time, I pass to James. James casts Eidolon of countless battles, and needing 2 blockers to stop Captain Engathrod, passes the turn. Thomas starts his turn by casting Memory Erosion, and then plays Demir Aqueduct. James, Michael and I mill 3 cards to Ruin Crab, and Thomas returns a tapped swamp to his hand with the Bounce Lands trigger. Thomas then moves to his end step, putting the only legal target, my Sanctum Weaver, into play from my graveyard. With nothing more to do, he ends his turn. In his turn, Michael casts Eternal Witness, triggering Memory Erosion. He mills 2 cards, and returns the Anguish on making in his graveyard to his hand. Next, he casts the spell, targeting Dusk Mantle Guild Mage, and pays 2 life to Poseidon to make the instant uncounterable. Thomas responds to this by activating the wizard's first ability, and the Guild Mage is then exiled. Michael loses 3 more life as the spell resolves, and Thomas points out that the spell entering his graveyard triggers an infinite loop between his mage's delayed triggers and Minecraft's effect. Unable to prevent this, Michael mills and takes damage until his life total reaches zero, knocking him out of the game. We will remember your sacrifice, Michael. With Michael defeated, Martin proceeds to his turn. 
I begin my turn by playing Bajuka Bog, exiling James's enchantment filled graveyard, and then cast one with the stars. I target Thomas's commander with the aura, and he responds by countering the spell with an offer you can't refuse. I mill two thanks to memory erosion, and Kami then drains James and Thomas for one life, given that the enchantment was still cast. James mill the card thanks to mind crank, and I create two treasure tokens as compensation for my spell not resolving. So many triggered abilities. Unfortunately, I get a bit muddled with my many triggers, forgetting that my Doomwake Giant's ability triggers when enchantments enter the battlefield, not when one is cast. I therefore incorrectly give all of my opponent's creatures minus one minus one, and then cast Enigmatic Incarnation, milling two more cards to Thomas's enchantment. Kami once again causes James and Thomas to lose a life, while simultaneously gaining me a life, forcing James to mill a card. This then triggers Doomwake Giant, giving each of my opponent's creatures minus one minus one, reducing Syphysis and Sanctum Weaver's toughness to zero. I then move to my end step, where I sacrifice Overgrowth to Enigmatic Incarnation's trigger, searching my library for Fate Unraveler. I put the Hag into play, triggering my giant once again, and giving each creature I don't control a further minus one minus one. This reduces Ruin Crab and Timeret's toughness to zero, putting them into the graveyard, and I pass the turn. James draws, taking one damage from Fate Unraveler and milling one card Mindcrank. He then recasts his commander, milling two to Memory Erosion, and ends his turn. Thomas draws, taking one damage, and plays a Swamp. Next he casts Ravenous Duke of Garbra, destroying Destiny Spinner with the creature's ETB, and then casts Fractured Sanity. James and I both mill 14 cards, and Thomas moves to combat. Here he attacks James with his commander, dealing him 3 damage, and milling him for 6 before moving to his end step. Thomas uses his pirate's ability to return the Yargle Glutton of Urborg that I milled to the battlefield under his control, and passes to me. Martin starts his turn by casting Frogamoth, milling 2 cards as he does so. Next, he basic lands Cycles Ash Barons, searching his library for a forest and putting it into his hand. Not yet finished, Martin plays Dimir Aqueduct, returning a tapped island to his hand. He then moves to combat, activating his commander's ability to make Tetsunari and Frogamoth unblockable to all non flying, non reaching creatures. Jumping frogs! He then attacks Thomas with Kami, Fate Unraveler, and the aforementioned Frog Horror and Thomas blocks Kami with his Chupacabra and the Hag with Yargol. Damage then occurs with Thomas taking 4 and every creature involved in the skirmish other than Kami being destroyed. Frogamoth's ability then triggers and Martin exiles 3 creatures in Thomas's graveyard along with one non-creature card as well. He puts 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on the freaky Frogo, gains a life and passes. James plays Reliquy Tower and in an act of pure desperation has opened the vaults. He mills two cards to Memory Erosion and Thomas returns zero cards to the battlefield when the sorcery resolves. Both James and I on the other hand return pretty much our entire graveyards to play, putting a heck load of triggers onto the stack as we do so. So many triggers. James and I choose what permanents our auras will enchant and James puts 13 draw triggers onto the stack thanks to his Eidolon of Blossoms and Kenrith's transformation. Unfortunately for him though, my triggers resolve first, and I begin by having Public Enemy enter attached to James's commander, and Song of the Dryads enter attached to Utopia Val, transforming it into a forest. This unattaches the Val from my commander, and I stick all of my buffing auras onto Tetsunari, and all of my negative auras onto James's creatures. I put one of the stars onto Sithis, turning her into a non-creature enchantment and causing all of the other auras attached to her to fall off. Finally, I have Mirror Maid enter as a copy of my Nylia's Colossus, and the stack then resolves. I exile both of James and Thomas's graveyards 11 and 12 times respectively with Agent of Erebos, and Doomwake Giant gives each of my opponent's creatures minus 23, minus 23, wiping their boards. Next I draw 23 cards thanks to my own Eidolon of Blossoms, and James draws 13 cards taking 13 damage from Fate Unraveler. This triggers Mind Crank milling James 13 times, which unfortunately for him puts the final 13 cards of his library into his graveyard. 
James's grasp of fate then resolves, and he exiles my Frogamoff before ending his turn. By as if that was long. Thomas begins his turn by playing Takunuma Abandoned Maya, and then casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. Martin and James return all of their non-land permanents to their hands, and Frogamoth returns to play now that Grasp of Fate is no longer in play. Not yet finished, Thomas casts Necropotence and pays 6 life for the enchantment to exile the top 6 cards of his library face down. He then moves to his end step where he puts the exile cards into his hand and passes to Martin. I play a forest and cast Gloom Shrieker, milling two cards thanks to memory erosion. I return the Ancestral Mask in my graveyard to my hand and cast the Aura, milling two cards. I enchant Frogamoth with the Mask and then cast Rancor, milling another two cards. I once again enchant my Frog with the Aura and use my remaining mana to cast Estra's Invocation. I mill two and have the enchantment enter the battlefield as a copy of Ancestral Mask, sticking the aura onto my already swole frog. Moving to combat, I attack Thomas with my 25-25 Frogamoth, dealing him lethal damage, and pass the turn to James. James untaps his land, and unable to stop himself from losing in his draw step, cycles Scatter Grove to speed up the process. This gives the table a good laugh, and leaves Martin and his frog-loving ninja as the victor. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed seeing proof that white isn't needed to make a successful Enchantress deck. I'd like to give a huge thank you to all of the amazing patrons listed on screen, without whom we would be unable to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out the affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to order through these, but it really helps out the channel. And finally, don't forget that you can help to support us in four quick and easy ways, liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time, stay awesome!